Now chapter one is called Conceive Your Idea, and it's broken into three parts, three concepts. Concept number one is called Acknowledge That You Want Change. And you've already done that by picking up this program. You, there's something at a gut level or at a root level telling you that you need to change your life. So we're going to give you an exact process, an exercise that you can use to kick that kick that whole idea off. And then concept two gets a little bit more focused on you and your intentions in life. We call it clear intention, which then leads us into concept three, where it's all about convincing yourself that you must change. This can't be something that you're just interested in or casually thinking about as a hobby. If you want to go from a, an employee to an entrepreneur, you, you need to know that this is something you've got to do. You have to do it for your life and for your freedom. So let's start by talking about concept one, acknowledging that you want change. This is essentially done through an exercise. And again, I recommend you go over and pick up the, the ebook at this time because you'll see all the exercises that are recommended in there. You can print them off or you, you can even just do it digitally and type out your answers. Whatever, whatever works easiest for you. The key is to just do this stuff and, and see where your head's at in the end. Now, the whole idea of, of uh, acknowledge that you want change is, is, really a, is really taking a look at your life today. And this exercise, is, this exercise forces you to look at your current job and your level of happiness with it. Um, and then a little bit of, of uh, history on yourself. How did you get into what you're doing today? And was it based on, like, like for me, was it based on some assumptions of this is what you have to do to get a secure job and a career? Or did you get into this line of work because you were passionate about it at the time and maybe things have changed? And then I want you to start thinking about the things that are bothering you. Because ultimately, that's probably what drove you here. There was something bothering you, something not sitting well with you. And it's time for you to get that down on paper and just and get it out and start realizing what it is that you actually need to do, what kind of changes you need to have in your life. And then the biggest question, which is right at the end of this questionnaire, is if you had enough money to cover, cover all of your expenses, would you still go to this job that you're going to every day right now? And if the answer is no, then why is it no? Because that's going to give you a huge reality check. This, this exercise in itself is a reality check of where your head, at, head is at today. And a lot of people are maybe afraid to admit these things to themselves or just never think that they should do it. Well, you're going to do that right now. And by the end of this exercise, I think you're going to move it into, a, into a, an entirely new frame of mind that's going to well prepare you for what we're about to do next in the second concept. So the second concept, clear intention, is where you get to talk about things that you want, things that you're passionate about. And these are really important topics because if you want to build a business and if you want to become a full-time entrepreneur, you better make sure that you're doing things that are in line with your passions and that will keep you inspired and motivated over the long haul. Uh, and we're going to get into why this is so important as you go through the, some of the rest of the exercises. But in, in the second concept, we're basically going to be going through three exercises. Uh, there's a passions exercise, a wants and don't wants exercise, as well as an ideal vision exercise. And you'll see in just a moment why they're so important. And it's actually quite an exciting thing to do when you sit down and put pen to paper, because you learn a lot of really interesting things about yourself. So let's quickly talk about the passions exercise. Now, most people have wired into them, uh, different things that they like to do, different things that they enjoy. And no two people are the same. If you were to take a, if you were to ask somebody to list all the different things that they're passionate about and rank them, no, I'd, I'd, I'd venture to say that most people would not have the same list. You'd, you'd be hard pressed to find two people with the exact same list. Everybody has things that are, that they find interesting. Uh, one of my business partners, we get along really well. We have lots of things that we share in common, but he doesn't like sports at all. And I love sports. So there's an area where our passions don't align at all, but there's things that he's into that I'm not, and it's just, that's how we work as people. But what's really cool about this exercise is you get a, a chance to sit down and actually acknowledge what you're passionate about. And I generally recommend that you, you sit back and relax, and you think about all the different things that you do and things that you experience in your life where you find it really easy to get lost in the moment. And time slips away, and you, you, know, you could just sit there and do that thing all day long, and it wouldn't really be an effort for you. In fact, you wish you could do it even longer. That, I mean, that's an ultimate passion. Some, some things will be stronger than others. And the key here is not to worry about ranking them, but as much as it is to just define the things that really get you going. So some of these things will be related to business. Other things might be related to how you spend your time with your family or uh, physical activities you do, like sporting events, or maybe you really like to cook. Um, so I want you to define that passion in part A, and then in part B, describe your ultimate experience with the passion. 
right? As an example, uh, you could you might be a huge fan of baseball, and you might your ultimate experience might to might be to be the person out on the field, you know, throwing the pitches, being the pitcher, and and playing defense. Another person might say, I love baseball, but I like being the hitter and hitting home runs. Whereas another person might really like baseball from a coaching perspective. They like being the coach and firing their team up and motivating them for the next game. So it's your, it's very important to understand what your best experience with that passion is. And you're going to use that information moving forward when it comes time to start defining some of your business objectives. The next section is called the wants, don't wants exercise. And this is something that not a lot of people do, at least part of it anyways. Knowing what you don't want is probably pretty common, actually, when you think about it. We all have a pretty easy time complaining about the things we don't want in our lives. We don't want to have our bosses bothering us. We don't want to be in debt. Uh, All these different things that we don't want, it's pretty easy to complain about them because they're painful. It's the other side of this exercise that I often find a lot more interesting. What do you want? It's, do you know that it's actually okay for you to define the things that you want in life? I think a lot of people struggle with this because either some un, unseen or hidden belief in their subconscious is telling them that it's greedy or wrong or selfish to say that they want things and to acknowledge that they actually have wants. And they, they you know, it's one thing to have needs, like the need for shelter and clothing, all that, but it's okay to want things as well, to want to earn money, to want to do a job that you enjoy, you know, to want to spend extra free time with your family. I don't care what it is, but acknowledging what you want is a big deal. And if you actually spend time to do this exercise in full, and that's what you're going to do right now, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. And so th- there's two parts to it. First, describe what you want and think about it at any level of life career, family, relationship, spirituality, doesn't matter. But take time to really define it at a core level. What do you want? And then even more importantly, why do you want it? And why don't you want it if it's a don't want? Because this will actually give you a bigger insight into what the real driving force is behind you. So for example here, uh, if we look at, let's use the don't want example. I do not want to work in a job that has no meaning for me. Why? Well, in in this example here, I'm no longer willing to invest all this time doing something that drains and depresses me. I don't want to look back at the end of my life and be regretful that I didn't step out when I was young or when I had the time to do the things that I want. So you can see it's it's one thing to complain, it's another thing to quantify it and explain why it's important to eliminate or, if it's a want, why it's important to incorporate that into your life. And this is a huge step for your life. If, if you acknowledge what you want, you're gonna, and then why you want it, you're going to be very driven and much more clear and motivated as to uh, why you want to start this business or anything else you happen to be doing as a result of this program. Then the third exercise in this concept is called ideal vision. And this is actually, again, like the previous exercise, something that very few people ever take the time to do. And when you think about vision itself, Vision is how, basically how we formulate and create our lives. Anything that we want to experience, anything that we want to have or be or do, we have to first live it at a visual or at a mental level. And when you think about what, what is mental activity, what is thinking about something or visualizing something, it's putting pictures in your mind as to that, that describe this experience that we're talking about here. So the clearer you get and the better you can describe those pictures in your head, then the easier it will be to bring those pictures into reality. Again, until you get that clear picture and write it in words, you're not giving yourself the 100% full opportunity of experiencing all this stuff. So this ideal vision exercise is basically just that. We're going to ask you to make a a written description of your ideal life. And this talks, this will go into every single detail that's important to you. So I'm not so worried about the context of if you write it in the first person or the third person or It doesn't matter. The whole point is just to get your vision down. Talk about things like, I, um, you know, in my life, I'm, uh, I'm working in this kind of business. I'm spending uh, this kind of time traveling. I'm seeing these kind of places. I'm working with these kind of clients, and I'm earning this amount of money. I'm having, you know, X number of days per year free time to just totally unwind and relax. I'm able to spend time uh, on humanitarian efforts that are really important to me. Whatever it is, get it down into your description so that you can see it and then experience it as you read it. And when, you, when you're done with that, then you can save that ideal vision onto the sheet that's included in this guide. The third and final concept here in Chapter 1 is convincing yourself that you must change. 
And it's one thing to be an employee and to dream about the idea of becoming a business owner and being that successful entrepreneur that would that seems so wonderful and, and sexy. But really, um, it can be very difficult to actually make that shift, to step out and do the thing, do the action that makes you become an entrepreneur full time. So you need to, to do a bunch of mental exercises that convince yourself that this is something you have to do. It's not just something you're going to dream about. You're going to reach a point where you got to do it. And until you reach that point, you likely won't act. So how, how do you convince yourself that you must change? Well, it's this exercise, that's how. You need to basically build yourself a bunch of emotional motivators. And by emotional motivators, I mean things that are going to motivate you with such a high level of emotional fuel that you will reach that mental point where this is something you have to do. And you're going to do it from two different perspectives. One is the idea of, when I succeed, then, and you're going to list reasons that drive you at an emotional level to want to succeed, to want to become this business owner. So when I succeed, I'm going to feel such an overwhelming sense of happiness and pride and joy and, and, and accomplishment that I'm so glad and I can't even imagine that I never would have taken this action. And there are a lot of positive motivators. But what's even more important is the second part of this, this exercise where you start acknowledging all the things that if I don't succeed, then... And this is where you get into some real heavy stuff because that's, that's negative emotion. That's negative motivators. And we're, as people, we are even more strongly motivated by things that we want to move away from, things that we want to avoid. We do not want to have to admit to the people in our lives who have doubted us that we couldn't do it. And so you're going to list all these things. If I don't succeed, then I'm proving all those other people who doubted me right. And I'd never, ever want to do that. If I don't succeed then I'm going to let myself down and I don't want to look back and say that I gave up. So there, that could be your safety net against giving up. You're not, you just don't want to let yourself down. So start listing out all of your positive and negative emotional motivators and keep this list going and, and growing with you because you're going to need every single piece of it as you reach times in your life and in your business where the struggle kicks in. And it will kick in. And I'm not trying to make this all negative because it's a lot of it is going to be a positive and fun experience, but you need to have all these tools, these motivators as weaponry in your arsenal to keep you going because I guarantee you're going to need it. So go ahead and, and, cons and complete. make sure that you complete all the exercises in this chapter so that we can then move on to chapter 2.